we've just begun the month of Elul, which is cited in the words of the commentaries that Elul, which initially was a Persian appellation for the month, is an acronym for Anila Dodi Vidodi Li. I am to my beloved, and my beloved is to myself, to me. Meaning that if the Jew takes the initiative to get closer to God by repenting, making amends, correcting the wrong, and committing himself to the future, to be a dedicated Jew, and to adhere and ascribe to the precepts of the Torah, which we accepted at Sinai, although the Jew hasn't fully returned, as long as the process has begun, that's sufficient. Ani Dodi, if I am to my beloved, God will respond to us overwhelmingly with love and with mercy and compassion as a forlorn son who attempts to come back to the father with the father's yearning to see any indication for the son's return and the father will embrace that child. The question is what exactly is tshuva, what is repentance, what does one have to do? Maybe you would say that if it's a minor infraction, something of a lesser transgression, you'd say that is forgivable. But something which is extremely grave, such as violating the areas of the Torah which carry the liability of the death penalty, or spiritual excision, such as eating on Yom Kippur, or doing a creative activity on Yom Kippur, which carries the liability of Kore's spiritual excision, maybe being so severe, maybe it's really not correctable. person cannot be reinstated, or even something of more serious nature. person transgresses with the liability is the death penalty, such as violating the Shabbos, which carries the liability of stoning, which is the most severe of the death penalties, is that atonable through tshuva, through repentance? What about something a person transgresses and violates inadvertently, which at the time of the Beis Amigdash, the temple, the only way one could be atoned if he would bring a sin offering. Today we have no temple. Is it really atonable that today we only have tshuva, we only have repentance? Are we really in a quandary of how to deal with seemingly this untenable situation? Rambam writes in his magnum opus, Yad Chazoka, that tshuva is mizbach kapora, tshuva is the altar of atonement. Today that we don't have the temple, we don't have the Kohen to officiate. Each Jew in his own right has a mechanism, a gift which was given to us by God, which is one of the positive commandments, that we're able to repent and confess our sin and we'll be fully forgiven. However, tshuva is the baseline for every transgression. If it's more severe, there are other things which are needed in conjunction with tshuva to bring about the full rehabilitation, the full reinstatement. For instance, Rambam writes that if one violates a positive commandment, such as not eating matzah at the Seder, not sitting in the sukkah, not saying the Shema, not putting on tefillin, which is a positive commandment, if a person repents and only repents, and he's sincere 
in his remorse, and he makes a commitment never again to violate the positive commandment, he will be fully forgiven and fully reinstated. However, a negative commandment, which is more severe than the non-fulfillment of a positive commandment, there, tshuva in its own right is not sufficient. One needs to experience a Yom Kippur. There's something innate in the holiness of Yom Kippur because of the overwhelming level of mercy of God, the person will be fully forgiven. What about if it's even more severe than that? One violated a negative commandment, which carries the liability of spiritual excision, what we call kores, or even the death penalty. Then repentance and your kippur is not sufficient. One needs something more than that. One needs some degree of suffering. Suffering doesn't necessarily mean something which is overwhelming, painfully consuming, but anything which would be a disruption in one's life, whether it's a financial loss, whether it's emotional turmoil, whether it's a serious disappointment, only God knows what suffering is. The Talmud tells us that if you put your hand in your pocket to take out one coin, and you take out a coin which you did not intend to take out, this is classified as Yisurim, as suffering. So we don't really know what meets the grade of what suffering is. However, you need three components, three elements. You need repentance, you have to experience the Yom Kippur, and you need some degree of suffering. What about if, God forbid, a person desecrated God's name, which is the most severe, then the person, in the words of Rambam, is mostly atoned through the three elements which you discussed. However, the full reinstatement is only when the person dies. That particular experience brings about it, but it's only if the person maintains that repentant state and he leaves this earth in as a repentant, that he's fully atoned and the death itself completes the atonement. Just to discuss what exactly is tshuva and repent, there's a question which is asked by the commentators. If one person offends his fellow and he asks forgiveness and the person forgives him, he's forgiven. And it's not really something so unusual and so, so special. Maybe if one would betray his fellow, forgiving him would be considered a great kindness. But something for less than a betrayal, especially if the person would compensate and would do restitution, whether it was as a damager, as a thief, or whatever it may be. It's not something really so unusual for people to forgive one another. But yet, it's clear from the verses and from the commentators that God's being agreeable to forgive a person, this is considered something out of the ordinary. It's a chesed elyon. It's something which is like a divine kindness. Why? Why should it be considered so out of the ordinary? It's almost miraculous. God's willing to perform a miracle for the sake of the person to be forgiven. So the commentators, they explain it with an allegory.